Hey guys, welcome to our next video on functions. So in this video, we're gonna talk about inverse functions, one-to-one -one functions, and the vertical line test. Let's start with the vertical line test. What is it? Why do we need it? Well, the vertical line test really just tells us if something is a function. It really involves the graph of the function. In our first function machine, recall that we plugged in an apple, right? And we got a red apple. So if we, every time we plug in the same green apple, we should get a red apple. What happens if I get this other situation? Now, let's say that I went to some other store, bought a knockoff function machine, okay? Now, in this knockoff function machine, I plug in this green apple, okay? And it gives me a red apple. Awesome, seems to work, and I saved myself a pretty penny. Great, so I try it again. I plug in this green apple again, this time, I get a snowman. Now, in my understanding, I was gonna get a red apple. Is this a function? Well, here's the problem. It's not predictable. And that breaks our rule of functions. So all we're gonna do on a graph is draw a vertical line. And what we say is, if we could draw a vertical line anywhere on this function, but we only pass through the function once, it is indeed a function. Now, this is the graph where y squared is equal to x. Now notice that if we draw a vertical line here, we don't even pass through the function. But on the right side, we pass through the function twice. This is an issue. This is not a function because, for example, for the value of 4, when x is 4, I have the value y is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 2. This is an issue because it's not predictable. Sometimes when I plug in four into my machine, I'm gonna get two, and sometimes I'm gonna get negative two. This is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. So the next thing we're gonna discuss is a one-to-one -one function. What is a one-to-one -one function? Well, a one-to-one -one function says for any given value of x, we actually only get one value of y, but for any given value of y, we only get one value of x. So we're gonna expand on this vertical line test, and a one-to-one -one function is any function that passes a vertical line test, but also a horizontal line test. Now, let's take a look at a function, y is equal to x squared. Now, this is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Notice, no matter where I draw a vertical line, I only pass through this graph once. But does it pass a horizontal line test? No. So this is not a one-to-one -one function. Notice that if I draw a horizontal line right here, I pass through the function twice. So this is not a one-to-one -one function, but it is a function still. So let's take a look at an example of y is equal to x cubed. If we graph this function, we notice that no matter where we draw a vertical line, we only pass through this function once. But also, no matter where we draw a horizontal line, we're also only gonna pass through this function once. This is an example of a one-to-one -one function. Now, why do we need to know one-to-one -one functions? Well, this is gonna tie in with our next topic, an inverse function. So a one-to-one -one function is a function in which the inverse is a function, but the original function is a function. So what is an inverse? So recall that with functions, we had a domain and a range. And typically our domain was x values and our range was y values. For the inverse, it's undoing the work. Remember, inverse really means to undo. So all we're gonna do is switch the x and y. In fact, this is the only rule that has to apply. You gotta switch the input and the output, or you gotta switch the x and the y. So let's take a look at an example of how to find an inverse function. So let's take a look at the case of y is equal to three x plus two. So for y is equal to three x plus two, all we're gonna do is switch the x and y. So we get, x is equal to 3y plus 2. That's it. Now, we typically write functions solving for y, not solving for x. So we could write this as y equals. And to do that, it ends up being y is equal to x minus 2 over 3. So this is really the inverse function in the ideal way it's written. But the only rule that must be followed is that you just got to switch the x and the y. That's it. So what if I tell you a point three comma seven is on a function. What would the inverse function be? 
Well, again, the only rule is switching the x and the y. So if 3 comma 7 was on the original function, 7 comma 3 is going to be on the inverse function. We're just switching what was the domain and making our range, and what was the range and making it our domain. So to see some examples of some inverse functions and the original functions, click on the link above. I'll see you guys next time.